Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to join us for this webinar. My name is Mark, and I'll be sharing with you today about Remote Winbox, a little bit about Admiral, and some of how we're helping customers with our service. So Remote Winbox is our shared cloud platform, and anyone with a Microtik can simply go to remotewinbox.com, create a free account, and click the activation link. And you can begin managing your routers in just a few seconds by copying and pasting a simple automatically generated script. So our dashboard has a user-friendly interface and it's intuitive, multiple layers of security, two-factor authentication, randomized credentials, firewall hardening, and for as low as 50 cents per router per month, you can have easy to use remote access that works through NAT and LTE. And we provide real-time health information and our premium service unlocks a whole bunch more features for $2 per router per month. And that includes automated backups, disaster recovery, configuration management, fleet uh, commander, which is a bulk configuration tool, and historical statistics. You have no contracts, no long-term commitments. Your first router is free. So if we take a look at Admiral, that's our on-premise or dedicated cloud fleet management solution. So this one makes sense for larger customers with either hundreds or thousands of microtics. It has all the same benefits as Remote Winbox Cloud, but because you're signing up for the annual bulk, uh, it's an affordable solution for larger service providers that are looking to add secure automation and orchestration. One of the benefits of Admiral is that our team of Microtik experts and full stack developers can provide custom Microtik software solutions. So that could be anything from a custom reporting engine to IPTV diagnostic tools to troubleshooting tools for your Microtiks. Really, the, the sky's the limit there. Just ask us if there's something you'd like to do with your Microtics that you thought of and you'd like some assistance with. For the month of February, we're offering a sweetheart special on our Admiral that includes an instance of LibreNMS. If you want to learn more about LibreNMS, never heard of it, not sure what it is, uh, take a look at our blog. So in a moment, we'll take a look at the remote Winbox software, but first we wanted to share what's in store for the next month. Uh, for the last month, behind the scenes, we've been working on improving the backend support for historical stats. So one of the things we had to do as we've scaled and grown up as a company and gained more customers is to improve on the way that we store data. And we used to do that in you know, SQL, and we've moved our database to a round robin database to better support doing uh, statistics at scale. So now that that's built, you're going to be able to see trending info on stuff like bandwidth, signal strength, lots of other stats. And we've got a new dashboard that's launching very soon. And that's going to make it easier to manage your routers without having to click as many buttons, navigate to different pages. In addition, we had a speed test beta that went out last year, and we got a bunch of feedback that it wasn't performing as users expected. So we took it back in, we improved it, and it's launching to beta again this week. I'm also going to share, as we look at the dashboard, some of the customer stories that we've heard. So it's time to take a look here. So in the main dashboard, you can see here, you get a heads up display of all of your routers, whether they're online, offline, or have a permissions issue. And a permissions issue just means that our system can't fully communicate with that router. And it could be something simple like a, a service is disabled in IP services. But when that functionality ends up being yellow, what you see on the dashboard, that means that something may not work, such as Fleet Commander, which is the bulk configuration tool, or maybe taking backups isn't gonna work. So the point of the dashboard overview here is just to kind of give you that heads up display. You can see at a glance whether you've got any outages going on. Uh, hopefully you're looking at the screen and all of it's showing up as green and you're ready to move on and say, hey, let's dive in and, and take a look at an individual piece. But for now, uh, let's take a look here. We can see CPU usage for my fleet, RAM usage for my fleet, disk usage for my fleet. And I can see I've got a couple of routers here that are getting close to being full on storage. So something to keep in mind, I may want to take a look at. If we jump into the router listing next, you'll see we've got a good heads up display of each individual router. So we looked at the, the network as an aggregate, and now we're gonna to start to drill down and look at each of my routers individually and say, hey, uh, maybe I wanna look for which ones have that close to full disk space. So I'll sort my disk and here I can see, okay, these routers are the ones that are getting close to being full on disk. I'd happen to know these ones are, are customer routers, so it's not a big deal. 
Um, if we want to take a look at CPU and sort by CPU instead. All right, I can see, hey, this guy's getting almost up to 50%. Might be time to start looking at maybe doing an upgrade on him. So if we continue to look around here in the dashboard, one of the things you can do is jump in and take a look at the real-time health statistics. So I could jump in here and there may not be any traffic on this network, but right away we can get some information on this router. We'll start drawing some graphs and be able to, to debug, troubleshoot what's going on with this router right now. Um, some of the neat things you can see here uh, are that we can see signal strength on the Wi-Fi and which devices are connected right now and what, uh, what their transmission rates are and stuff like that. In addition, if you wanted to give your users some access to some of this data without giving them access to Winbox, that's what we've got this end user view for. And you can enter an email address in there and then invite your user to be able to log in to a read-only account for this, which will allow them to see their router info, uh, check on the Wi-Fi, SSID, and passphrase. And again, take a look at some, some graphs that'll show bandwidth if there's any devices on that network. Um, uninteresting for me, I don't have any devices on this particular router that I jumped into. But I can also see, hey, here's some Wi-Fi connected devices, get their Mac and IP if we need to do some debug troubleshooting. In the coming soon here, like I mentioned, we've got speed test coming this week. So looked for that to be popped in soon and you'll be able to see that if you're a beta tester and give us feedback on, on what you think about it. If I check on the next thing, router health here, this is gonna give me again, an, an historical view of what did my routers look like for the last day, week, month. And so we've got some, again, CPU RAM disk info that's up at the top. I get a little heads up display of the map view and customers have told us that this is real helpful for making sure that they're on the right router because you can check the location or if you need to send a te technician out to service the customer, uh, this can be a helpful way to, to point them in the right direction. Uh, it's useful to be able to see day, week, month bandwidth views and then also day, week, month views of the CPU, RAM, and disk. So we can take a look and see if we've got any problems with any of our devices. So tags is a way to sort and group your routers. I uh, expect to see some changes here in the coming months as we continue to improve our service and allow for more organizing of your routers. Um, security is where we do some scanning if you've enabled the service to check for Maris exploits. So this, uh, you can see this router here has some icons here. And if I hover over the icons, it'll tell me what's wrong. Basically this router looks like it's been exploited with Maris. It's got all the indicators that uh, bad scripts, bad schedules, uh, malicious files, uh, all that kind of stuff exists on this router, which makes us feel like it might be exploited. And then down at the bottom here, we've got um, just an access list. Only these IPs will be allowed to connect to routers on your account. And so anytime you want to revoke access to um, your dashboard and remote access to Winbox, you can jump in here and, and remove any IPs that are not part of your deployment. So for example, if I go to Starbucks or hotel and I want to quickly get access to my fleet, I can jump in there and there will be a fix it button in the main dashboard that will allow me to say, hey, uh, hey, this IP cannot connect to remote Winbox. And then when I do fix it, I'd be able to connect from the coffee shop or hotel. And then later on, I can remove that IP. So backups uh, happen automatically daily. And if you decide that, hey, I want to take a look at what the configuration differences are between today and last week, uh, one of the use cases here is to jump in, view backups, I can take and compare. And I'll say, hey, a long time ago, what was the config and looking like? This is real useful. We had recently a customer that told us that uh, this saved them hours of outage from just being able to come in here and say, hey, here's some stuff that didn't exist here. I just got to copy this and paste it into the dashboard. And so you can see all differences highlighted in red and green on what's new and old. 
And that way you can quickly and easily restore service if a config change occurs. And then in addition, if a router blows up and you need to just replace it, you can go head back to your backups manager uh, and click view backups. Uh, I'll just pick one here and then you can view or download the config. And then you can copy and paste that into a new router to restore service. So next up, we've got firmware management. And this is a nice way to ensure that your fleet is up to date on firmware. Um, it's as simple as coming in here, picking the routers that you want. I've tagged a few with home. I'll go ahead and sort by home, select all and schedule an update. And then I can say, hey, 2 a.m. in a central time, I'm gonna do an update for these routers and submit, and that's it. At 2 a.m., these routers will update to the most recent version of the Microtik channel that they're subscribed to. If I decide uh, later on during the day that, hey, tonight's not a good maintenance window, I actually don't wanna do the updates, uh, it's as easy, it's just clicking remove updates and okay, and we will not update those routers in the night. So next up is Fleet Commander, which is our bulk configuration and troubleshooting tool. This allows you to jump in here and I can either recall a previously run Fleet Commander tool or I can generate new ones. And the way this works is that you again select routers. You can uh, sort by tags or by uh, the name of the router. And I'll just do all remote routers here and select all. And this will run whatever command you've set here to run against your entire fleet. So if I run command, uh, it's gonna say, hey, good morning, this is potentially dangerous. And I'll say, go ahead and run it anyway. And now in the background, uh, we've scheduled a job that's running through each router and running those commands. So this is super useful if you've added some new uh, IP addresses to your network and you need to allow uh, firewall access to those IPs or it could be anything um, troubleshooting, perhaps doing traceroute like I did to verify that paths out to the internet is working. And you'll have a log here that shows for each router uh, what was the results of your command that was sent. And so we've got a couple of uh, routers here that ran the command and we get a finished at the bottom. So super flexible tool could be used for debugging, could be used for just checking on things and auditing, could be used for reconfiguring portions of the network. Our login manager is next here. This is a radius light implementation that allows you to say, hey, I create some users here at the top and I can just add a user. Um, we'll go test user one, put in a password. And as easy as that, that user now has instant access to all of my routers that are defined down here at the bottom that have uh, active status and either full or read-only permissions. So if you want to flag a router as active, it's as easy as flipping it from active to inactive back to active. And if you wanted to change those permissions from full to read-only, you can just click the button and it does it. If you have just added a whole bunch of routers and you want to activate all of them, that's what the activate all button here at the top does. User manager is where our uh, flexibility comes in for the master account for your company. And so if you've got multiple employees or multiple users that manage your fleet of Microtics, you probably wanna come in here, set up some groups and permissions, and you'll see that each different group has some different permissions. This allows you to say that, for example, engineers can use Fleet Commander, but technicians can't. Uh, maybe customer service just has access to firmware updates in the dashboard only. And so this is a way to kind of structure your company users to be able to access your fleet of Microtix through our dashboard. So we talked about uh, what was coming, what's new, and that wraps up our webinar for today. So I thank you for joining us and taking the time to watch with us on YouTube. Um, let's take a look and see if we've got any questions. 
looking here, I see what happens if multiple routers connect with the same credentials. So if you reuse our copy and paste script on multiple routers, what will end up happening is that uh, it'll show as online two routers will be connected, but only one of them will be able to be managed. And usually it will be the one that most recently connected. And so that is a trouble condition. We'll want to get that sorted out. You'll want to generate a new license for the second router that you've got on the, on the system. What's the timeline for the new dashboard and the speed test? Yeah, so we expect to release speed test this week. Uh, that will again be in, in, hey, it's fresh and new. Uh, we've been testing it for a while, but obviously it needs to be field hardened and field proven. So as you use it, we'll wanna hear your feedback on, hey, it looks good, or hey, I noticed X, Y, or Z didn't, didn't behave the way I expected it to, so let us know. Uh, as far as the dashboard is concerned, that's coming in the next um, couple of weeks. We've got a big project in place. What we want to do is that right now there's a lot of data duplication that happens on, for example, firmware manager, fleet commander, backup manager, and the, just the main router dashboard. And we want to consolidate all that down to a single page so that your workflow is, hey, I either want to look at overall data for everything or an individual router. If you want to look at overall, um, from there, you say, hey, I want to fire off Fleet Commander or the backup. And, and conversely, when you want to look at an individual router, you may want to just drill down from there instead of having one place for historical stats and a different place for real-time stats. How does your service scale from small networks to large networks? Yeah, so um, we have customers of all sizes, and by all sizes, I mean some customers just stay on the free tier, they just manage one router, and uh, we've got obviously many customers with a handful or dozens of routers, and then we've got customers with hundreds and uh, our largest deployments uh, approaching 10,000 routers. So all the way in between, uh, we've got customers of all sizes. Uh, here's another one. Our Admiral service, uh, what's the difference between dedicated cloud and on-premise? So we've got two options there for uh, what, what we call our Admiral service. And again, that one is meant for customers with usually more than 200 routers. And the scenario there is that hey, you wanna do bulk annual pricing and, and uh, worry less about price per router and just say, here's my annual fee for the service for a whole bunch of routers that I, that I connect to it. And so um, the difference between dedicated cloud and on-premise is that if we're, you opt for the on-premise option, uh, you're gonna provide a VM infrastructure to us. And that could be that you give us remote access to the hypervisor, or it could be that uh, you build it to our specifications and give us access to a handful of VMs that make the system run. Or if you go with the dedicated cloud option, it's super easy. You just sign up for Admiral. We provision everything on the back end on our co-location in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I think we'll take one more question. Can you help attach a large amount of routers to our system? Yeah, so uh, some of our customers have used our onboarding tool and our onboarding tool allows us to say, hey, uh, we give you a comma separated value template uh, file and that spreadsheet you take and fill in the details uh, with your routers, their nicknames, their um, IP addresses, credentials, if you have latitude, longitude data, if you want to add any tags to them. And then we take that and run that through our tool and we can onboard thousands of routers in a matter of minutes. And that allows us to quickly onboard if you've got you know, a bulk number of routers that you want to get imported to our system, we can do that either on the dedicated cloud or an Admiral, uh, on-premise Admiral. So again, uh, thanks everybody for coming out and checking out the webinar, watching the video, appreciate it. And don't forget to stop by remotewinbox.com, check out our blog and YouTube. Thanks and have a great day.